Today we have here with us Dr. Raja Ratna Ambedkar, Indian social and religious activist and politician, born in the Ambedkar family to the great grandfather Dr. B. R. Ambedkar, well known for his contributions to the constitution of India. Dr. Raja Ratna Ambedkar here is widely known for his contributions within the Indian Buddhist Congress. Welcome to the show, sir. How are you today? Thank you. I'm very much fine. How, do, how does it feel to be in the land down under? Is it very cold? Is it okay for you? Yeah, yeah. I have um, all these uh, experiences of this, so no problem. What's one memorable experience you've had in the past couple of days in Australia? In Australia, uh, last in couple of days, I visited uh, Melbourne uh, in Parliament. And I, um, I was hosted by the uh, member of parliament where I got to learn about the Australian uh, way of uh, politics and uh, over there they uh, told me that uh, in uh, politics uh, uh, the religion is not um, issue of uh, pro propagation of or uh, propaganda and even the government uh, uh, encourages various uh, religions and their cultures and, and and it was very much impressive to know that uh, in australia almost one of 40 different kind of religions are uh, uh, living in australia it is really um, it was really glad to know that uh, a country with uh, almost a um, history of 120 years uh, with 160 or 140 religions uh, they have a stronger economy than India. That was really great to know. Yeah, that's correct. So um, traditionally, Melbourne um, and the wider Australia has known for its multicultural appetite. Um, yes. And Melbourne specifically, it's a very multicultural city. Um, if you have walked down the streets of Melbourne, you would have noticed that there's people from all over the world. Yes. Um, so you're here to celebrate the 12th anniversary uh, the diksha dhamma how do you think that you've been able to influence um, the multicultural society here through some of the joyous and very fun and very colorful celebrations you've had in the past couple of days yes yes um on um Ashoka Vijayadashmi, which was on uh, 14th October 1956. Uh, this year we are celebrating 66th anniversary of Dhamma Diksha Day, uh, which Baba Sahib Ambedkar um, uh, took, um, uh, embraced Buddhism in the year 1956. And almost after 65 years, we have become a global community. I would like to know, uh, I would like to uh, give you the information that the, uh, the, our community was once upon a time, untouchables of India, and uh, they were um, uh, not uh, uh, given the authority or not given the rights to education also. The basic fundamental rights were also denied. And within a period of 65 years, we have become, uh, after Baba Savambedkar embraced Buddhism, and he uh, gave us the path of equality, liberty, justice, and fraternity, which is very most important and he removed the caste uh, biased thinking of uh, Indians or the humans which we are um, having. So within a period of 65 years, we have become a global community um, in the world because of Baba Sahib Ambedkar's contribution to uh, the democracy, to the constitution and to the religion. That is correct. Um, and I think gone are the days where we are referring to religion. Now it's more become a way of life. And I'm certainly yes. sure that um, through the principles you've just mentioned, there's, there's some sort of ability to cultivate a way of life. Um, so wh wh what, uh, what are sort of the core principles around the way of life you're talking, you're talking about? And how does that um, pan into the uh, political setting here in Australia? And like you said, Australia has supported the multicultural um, diversity um, setting. So what, what's one message that you've received from here that you can take back to the um, Indian society? Um, uh, even uh, from the uh, uh, Australian parliament, I made my Facebook live uh, to give message to the Indian government or the Indian people. In India, what we are uh, doing is that we we are destroying the country on the name of religion. Uh, one religion is trying to uh, be forced on uh, the rest of the Indians. In India, 
we hardly have nine uh, seven to nine religions in uh, india but uh, um, the peoples are being harassed on the name of religion the um, uh, the uh, followers of islam or the muslims are beaten to death just to utter uh, jai shri ram which is a uh, uh, some uh, chanting of hindus uh, even the buddhists are being beaten to death uh, just uh, for getting converted to buddhism so this is the message which i want to give to indian government and the indian people that the india having a, a history of almost 5000 years and because of uh, uh, divide uh, casteism and uh, the religion which we are uh, others are imposing on uh, and the government I, I would like to suggest and uh, request the government that um, the governance of uh, India is should not be based on religion. Religion is their uh, specific, uh, their individual right, their individual faith. What an individual wants to uh, uh, observe in his own life, that should be left to uh, that individual. The government should not encourage or uh, one religion uh, to be imposed on the country. The government should uh, try to focus on uplifting the governance, the economy, the education, the uh, entrepreneurship, the job creation. That uh, That is why we have selected the government. But, uh, but the government is not doing their own job and they are uh, just like uh, religious preachers. We have seen that in parliament, uh, I, uh, I have got the information that parliamentarians in uh, Australia, uh, they do not have propagate on a uh, basis of religion. But in India, the parliamentarians, the in the house of parliament, the chanting of one religion uh, is going on in parliament. So this is the one strong message I want to give to the Indians that because of our division in uh, religions and casteism, our history, our country is degrading day by day. The reports are so worse that eminent Indians and students are leaving the country. And uh, because of this kind of situation, the country is degrading day by day our economy just uh, for example australian one australian dollar is equal to 55 rupees 54 rupees uh, just uh, 120 years of uh, this history of australia and we have 5000 years of history of india still the dollar the currency of uh, australia is uh, is 50 times 55 times stronger than india so Indian government must have some introspect uh, that where we are leading the country. And but not only the government, governments, the people of India should also introspect into their own uh, aspect where, where we are taking our country. Yes, certainly. But don't you see the um, the difference in the amount of population in the different countries? So, uh, say, for example, if we are talking about Australia, it's a much smaller country. So the yes. demand and supply sort of equalizes there. But for a country that's of very large population nature, say, for example, India or China or any other Asian countries that has a large population, um, do you, uh, what do you see as some of the ways that we can encourage that equalization of demand and supply and providing more opportunities? Um, how, how, if given a chance, how would you be able to bring some of the um, uh, ventures that will help equalize the demand and supply and provide more opportunities to the younger generations? Yeah, but see the education level first, the education level of India should be um, uh, at the global uh, competition level because most of the students are leaving uh, the country to get education like in australia most of, uh, of the students are, are from india so um, once of, once upon a time we were having uh, 17 world universities uh, in the era of samrat ashok but now we don't have any uh, university which is in a top 100 universities of the world so education must be the prime uh, goal to achieve because we have we are the um, a largest second largest population in the world uh, so if we have these resources trained then uh, this will not be our liability this will be our asset that 132 crore uh, uh, population will be the asset of india if they are trained and educated properly 
to uplift the country. So one th the uh, second largest population is actually uh, our strength, actually strength of the India, but they are misguided and uh, they are not uh, uh, literate to that level, educated to that level. So uh, that is the major uh, issue I would like to uh, address that education is the key uh, that should be addressed properly. While addressing education with the population in India, we have noticed there's a uh, there's a there's as much as there's opportunities, there's also lack of awareness around the diverse opportunities present there. So, how do you think there's there's some method to um, let the population know there's beyond certain specific occupations or certain specific professions, there's opportunities other than that as well. How do you think that that can be made aware to the public? See, nowadays we, we are a global community and um, um, as I said that um, we are not coping uh, what's going on within the world. So if we get an opportunity to know what demands are there in world so that we can uh, prepare our uh, resources, our human resources, our natural resources so that we can uh, address to the demand of the world that will be uh, very much helpful to the country's economy also and the country's uh, uh, education system also. But we are lacking on that point. So um, uh, we should have that information technologically should be that much advanced that uh, whatever changes or whatever demands in one corner of the world should be uh, communicated to each and every Indian. Uh, uh, so uh, such kind of uh, information uh, advancement in information technology should also be there so that we can uh, get to know what opportunities are there in, the, in any corner of the world. Yeah, what do you see as some of the future opportunities for the Asian countries? Asian countries, see, we have um, uh, very good natural resources. We have lands, uh, very much lands. We have um, agriculture system, uh, very much dependent on, on agriculture system. So if we focus on that, we can serve the uh, globe, we can serve the uh, world. So we have a lot of opportunity in that sector and now uh, our uh, younger generation, they are also getting educated. Uh, so we can serve. In Japan, uh, I have seen that there is a lack of um, uh, people over there. They don't have human resources. So if we can train our children, if we can train our younger generation so that they can uh, serve the global community and so they can uh, uplift India. So we have a lot of opportunity in agriculture, in technology, because we have land resources and human resources in abundance. Yeah, certainly. Um, I was told that you um, received your degree from your university in Mumbai. So can you yeah. share your personal story of how access to that sort of education helped you gain the knowledge you have today and how that has helped you become the person you are and give you that world exposure? Yeah. Uh, see, in India, uh, what is uh, happening is that the parents are not much aware of the uh, various streams uh, that uh, they should train their children. So our parents were also not having that much knowledge that uh, oh, uh, for which course we, uh, we should uh, train our children. So basic uh, education is that we do our uh, schools, so then we do our plus two grades, and then we go for degree. So up to degree, uh, I got my um, education in from Mumbai University. Then uh, we have certain upper caste families, and they have they are very much career oriented. So. Uh, uh, then my friends uh, advised me to do MBA, uh, Masters in business, business Administration. So I did my business administration uh, and then I did my uh, CA and now I'm uh, uh, sorry, CS and uh, then I'm for my PhD. So um, because of this uh, knowledge, I got to know the opportunities in the world. So uh, knowledge about education uh, in parents is very much lacking and because of Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar's literature, I got to know that my education is not only for my family, my education should uh, for my society. So that education must be used to uplift the society which, are, which is still uh, lacking that basic teachings. 
Certainly, um, we are all aware that information is wealth and knowledge is power. Um, so certainly you've got that in your hands um, and certainly your story would help a lot of people become aware that you need education in life. Um, can you share some of the um, experiences you had ha have had over the past couple of days here in Australia? And so, um, I was told that you had an opportunity to meet the migrant community here. So can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, uh, I have seen a lot of Indians uh, getting migrated to Australia and we have seen uh, many students, but uh, uh, I got an uh, ex uh, experience is that uh, many are students, they have came over here, but they are, they are not uh, organized. The Indian communities, maybe of any caste or religion, they should uh, be organized with each other so that they can help their uh, fellow members in India. Uh, but what we are uh, uh, doing is that the caste system which uh, in India we are following, we are taking that caste system with us and migrating in India. So what we is doing is that if, certain, if uh, a person from certain caste, he will go to uh, the person from his caste member only. So we are uh, the system which is a failure in India that failure system we are trying to uh, copy in Australia. So we must uh, stop this. Oh, whichever caste, whichever community or whichever religion you are, you must have an organized way. So because we see the Indians over here, maybe of any caste, religion or creed, uh, they are expecting some uh, uh, returns. Uh, the Indians uh, fellow members are expecting that they will guide us and how they have uh, came uh, how they have migrated, which courses they have taken, how they can search a job. They should deliver, they should give uh, knowledge to the fellow members who are left in India so that they can also lead a, a nice life. So this uh, I am saying is that uh, our people, Indians, they are also doing their community-based uh, work or uh, they are making their community-based organizations in India or uh, in Australia also. So we must not do, uh, I think there should be only one uh, criteria to be get organized is that we follow equality and each and every uh, uh, human being is equal. That should be the criteria of organization. Certainly, and in light of that, so what does Indian Buddhist Congress do in that space and how has Indian Buddhist Congress Society helped the migrant community here? Yeah, uh, see, uh, as a uh, national president of Buddhist Society of India, I have come here for the second time. Uh, and this time I'm also going to uh, various countries as a uh, president. So I have taken the uh, knowledge about which courses. So after going back to India, the Buddhist Society of India will open a migration center, uh, even the uh, basic uh, highlights uh, coaching uh, classes, so that we can train uh, our students, our community people, and they can uh, come over here, which, and we will also finance if some uh, 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 eminent person, eminent student, but he lacks uh, uh, financial resources, then that financial resources will also be provided by the Buddhist Society of India. And so that many more students, because the scholarship which the government of India gives is, is for limited students and uh, most of the uh, students are left behind in India. So those who want to make career and those who want to uh, have future education, we will finance them, we will have uh, migration uh, centers and we will have the coachings so that uh, our students can come to Australia and we can have uh, that kind of sharing of education. Even we are uh, uh, opening one unicity in the Buddhist Society of India in coming days, in, in a period of uh, three to five years, we are opening a world Buddhist unicity so that uh, if anyone cannot come to uh, Australia because of its financial problem, so that we can uh, open uh, one uh, faculty or one uh, university of Australia uh, in India also, so that they can take the education from India itself. Certainly. Um, and in light of that, um, 
that that's a very generous gesture and that's a very kind thing to do to the um, younger generation yearning for education but in light of that it's always a feedback loop right like we you you're training somebody giving the providing education and necessary support but how can the students also give back um, to the Indian community or to the community yeah. from where they have come from um, yes. so what, what sort of feedback loop can we implement there yeah, we, we have already talked on uh, that, our community. We have already discussed. Uh, the Buddhist society uh, will uh, financially support the candidates, support the students. And in return, uh, for example, if the uh, student will get a job uh, in this country, then uh, from his annual income, we, are, uh, we will request the student that one month salary should be uh, given back to the society given back to the community so that we can uh, prepare another students and we can uh, send them over here. Baba Sahib Ambedkar has introduced this concept, pay back to the society so that whichever amount, whichever salary which are you getting, 20% of Baba Sahib Ambedkar has uh, told, one fourth of your salary should go back to your society. So the same concept we are applying over here, we, uh, uh, from 12 month salary, your one month salary should go back to your society yeah that is that is a good way to look at it uh, definitely that provides an opportunity for the students to think about how to give back and uh, not just necessarily the students any sort of migrant community here on how to give back and how to um, uh, you know be part of that feedback looping process um, thank you sir for that um, sort of uh, ideas and uh, discussions really um, well, uh, that was a good chat. Um, I hope you were able to provide some insights and uh, sh this sharing of knowledge has helped some of our viewers there. Um, was there anything um, specific that you'd like to say? Um, one last uh, word of knowledge or word of wisdom? Yeah, I would like to uh, give a message from your platform to the rest of the people of India or, or, or uh, settled over um, in any part of the world. Uh, please be equal. Equality uh, is uh, the message which has given by all our uh, founders of the religions. So please be equal. The uh, walls of uh, caste and uh, creed and race uh, language, uh, education, that should not be in between us. So please uh, uh, have equality uh, when you leave uh, India and that uh, message should be uh, part of our life. Definitely. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for joining the show. Uh, we wish you a fantastic time here in the land down under and uh, look forward to catching up with you again sometime. And have a safe thank journey you. back home. Thank you, thank you, thank you.